Gladstone is a phenomenon in lots of ways. I mean, who would expect to find a French chateau in the middle of the English countryside? And it's very much the vision of one man, Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild, who acquired the estate in 1874 and set about creating a place in the country where he could bring friends and family to entertain them at weekends. And so Wadston really sprung from that. But he chose Buckinghamshire because he knew the county very well. Other members of his family had already started to build the most extraordinary houses in the vicinity. In fact, Buckinghamshire was often referred to as Rothschildshire in the 19th century because so many members of the family lived here. It was an extraordinary phenomenon because the Rothschild family, having made a lot of money in the 19th century and having come from the ghetto in Frankfurt with nothing, decided to build on a huge scale throughout Europe. Most of those houses have now gone. Uh, Wadsden remains as the one with its collections intact, in fact, growing. One of the really astonishing things about this house is that Ferdinand began from scratch. There was nothing on this bare hill when he started out. And the house was assembled and the grounds all around it in an astonishingly short space of time. Ferdinand held his first house party in May 1880, six years after he'd bought the estate from the Duke of Marlborough. Wadsden was renowned for the quality of the hospitality and the entertainment that was given. Ferdinand's guests came from all walks of life, but the real pinnacle was his royal visitors, Queen Victoria and the Prince of Wales, who visited on numerous occasions. Ferdinand continued to entertain for the next 18 years, but it's clear from some of his own writing that he worried about Wadston's future. Thankfully, Ferdinand didn't need to worry so much because his sister, Miss Alice, who inherited from him, very much saw herself as the custodian of Ferdinand's legacy at Wadston. We have in the archives a wonderful photo of Miss Alice from about 1910, when she is towards the end of her life, and she still managed to look like this wonderful kind of bustling bundle of energy. She had an incredible eye for detail in every aspect of life at Wadston, but the area she's particularly remembered for is the gardens. And we have wonderful, very early colour photographs of the garden from that time on stereoscopic glass slides that you looked at through a viewer and you got an almost 3D idea of what the gardens would have looked like. When Alice died in 1922, she left Wadston and her other properties quite unexpectedly to James de Rothschild of the Paris Rothschilds and his English wife, Dorothy. James and Dorothy remained childless, but during the war, during World War II, in fact, there were a hundred children who were evacuated from London because of the bombing and who took over Wadston. Everything was cleared out for them. After the war, James began to worry about what would happen to Wadston in the future, the same way that Ferdinand had. And he decided the best thing to do would be to bequeath the manor and its collections to the National Trust with a large endowment and a management committee chaired by a member of the family, in this case, Dorothy. So it was up to Dorothy to open the house in 1959, two years after James died and she continued to run the house in her position as chair of the committee until her death in 1988, at which point she herself bequeathed that interest to Lord Rothschild. When Lord Rothschild took over, Wadsden embarked on a different trajectory in lots of ways through the Rothschild Foundation, of which he is the chair, and it's the foundation which underpins all of Wadsden's activities on behalf of the National Trust. Because of his passion for contemporary art, for example, that means that we can now explore contemporary art in all sorts of different forms, whether it's through new acquisitions or through buildings like this extraordinary room that we're sitting in now, which houses both the archive but is also the home of the Rothschild Foundation. So in recent years, Wadsden has seen a renaissance, really, when the collections are being preserved but are also being added to, the gardens have all been restored and I think it's a real reflection of the interest of the family and the commitment of the family to this property which they care about so much and which will take it into the future. Mm -hmm.